got to get used to the fact that Chalky is not a figment of Matthew's imagination. No, I don't believe that. It's not Where possible. Where she comes from or what she is beats me completely at the moment, and it beats Matthew too. But Chalky is real. She exists. The others wouldn't understand. I want you to go away. Chucky? What she said now? She hasn't said anything. That's the trouble. She's gone. Matthew! Polly! Look out! Good day. <laughs> what do you think? What's wrong? It's all right, Mary. It's quite all right now. What? Matthew and Polly, where They're are safe they? safe and sound upstairs in bed. Oh, what's happened? They fell in the river. Oh, no! Oh, all right. Mary, they're okay. Oh, I must go to them. Look, let's just find out. It's like Phil said. They fell in the river. I thought they were goners for sure. I haven't stopped sweating yet. How did it happen? Pure accident. We were fishing off that old jetty, the kids and I. But I'd gone with Colin to get some cool drinks. A boat broke free from its moorings and smashed into the jetty. They were both thrown into the river. They were swept away in no time. And how on earth? Who saved them? Well, Matthew did. Old Colonel Summers saw it all from his window. He thought they were done for for sure, but then he saw Matthew strike out and grab Polly. Matthew did? Yes. Well, Summers was terribly impressed. He went after them in his boat, but he reckons they were well over a mile away before he caught up with them. And Matthew was still supporting Polly. There's no doubt he saved her life. Old Summers says he's going to make sure that Matthew gets a medal for it. And quite right, too. If anyone ever deserved a medal, it was Matthew. Right, Colin? Yes, Dad. But... Matthew can't swim. I thought Chucky wasn't coming with us. So did I. But she must have been here all the time, keeping quiet. So what happened? It's hard to say, really. It was also quick. I saw the boat going to hit the jetty. Then I was in the water. I tried to swim, but I knew it was no good, and I was going to be drowned. And I started going under. Then I heard Chalky telling me not to be a fool and not to panic. I was so surprised, I stopped. And then she said, Now think of nothing, like you do with your painting. And then I was swimming. I don't know how, but somehow she made my arms and legs do the right things. So you see, it wasn't me at all. It was Chalky. You mean she showed you how to swim? Yes. She's the one who did it, not me. I see. So, of course, as soon as you found you could swim, you struck out for the shore. But I couldn't have done that. There was Polly. She'd have drowned. That's right. You went back for Polly, that's the point. You saved her. And we're very proud of you. Thank you, Dad. It was Chucky who really did it. What's that? Another of Chucky's views? Sort of. It's where she comes from. That's her home.
Time just coming up to 22 minutes past eight, and we turn from ancient clothes like John no? here to modern ones. 12 year old Matthew Gore, who lives in Hindmere in Surrey, became a hero last week when he was on holiday with his family in Sussex. Our reporter Dennis Buck spoke to Matthew at his home. Matthew? Hello, Matthew. I believe you and your little sister had a nano escape last week. Hello there. Hello, Mr. Martin. Did you have a nice holiday? Yes, thank you. And how does your dad like being back at work, eh? He doesn't like it. When he came home from the office last night, he said he wished we were still at the cottage. Uh, I know just how he feels. Here, I'll tell you what. You give him nose for me. Thank you. So long, then. <laughs> oh, that's very good. Your parents must be very proud of you. Now, the thing is, I'm told you'd never swum before. Mummy, is that right? You couldn't swim. Can I open the letters? Yes. But when you felt yourself sinking, you heard a voice telling you what to do. Well, sort of. And you think this voice must have been your guardian angel? No, that's a load of rubbish. But, but you told the local reporter... I did that, that... He said it. I didn't know you was a reporter anyway. Then you don't think it was your guardian angel who told you how to swim? I never said anything about guardian angels. It was him. All that happened was that I got into a flap and then chopped. And suddenly I found I could swim. But you'd never been able to before. No. That was 12-year-old Matthew Gore, who learned to swim in the instant and rescued his little sister. Time now, 25 past eight. Time for sport. Did you know anything about that? I certainly didn't. And Matthew never said anything. How did they find out? Somebody must have told them, I suppose. Old Colonel Summers, if he really is putting Matthew up for a life-saving medal, I guess... Look, there's a picture of Matthew. What? Here, let me see. That's how the BBC got onto it. Matthew didn't say anything about this, either. It's not like him to be so secretive. Not like him at all. Hi. You know about this? No. Matthew. We want the truth now. I didn't. Not really. You must have spoken to a reporter. Interviewed by our reporter, Matthew modestly denied any claims to heroism. Are you saying they made this up? No. But I didn't know he was a reporter. Not until... Not until what? Not until the BBC man told you about it. Oh. Yes, oh. We've just been listening to you on the radio. You can't pretend you didn't know about that, can you? No. He told me who he was when he rang up. When was this? Yesterday afternoon, while you both were out. He asked if he could speak to me. Why didn't you tell us? I didn't want to upset you. I thought you'd be afraid if I told him about Chucky. I didn't know. And anyway, I didn't think it'd be interesting enough to get broadcast. Matthew, I don't care... Well, it's too late now. The damage is done. But if there are any more would-be interviewers, you better refer them to Mummy or me before you speak to them, OK? OK. Sorry, Dad. Yes, he's here. It's your friend, Roy Landis. I don't want him here again. All right. Hello? Yes, hello, Roy. How are you? Uh, fine, thanks, but I'm just about to dash off my train. Yes. Uh, OK, uh, I'm a bit pushed for the next couple of days. I've uh, just got back from holiday. You know how it is. Well, all right, that should be fine. Uh, I'll see you this evening, then. Six o'clock. Right, bye. Excuse me, are you Matthew Gore? Yes. Can I talk to you, Matthew? No, we are not interested in putting Matthew on display for your psychic circle. 
My son is not a freak. Goodbye. Hello? Oh, Vicar, I wonder if you could just hold on one moment. Yes, the telephone's ringing. I'll be straight back. Excuse me. Hello? Hello? You must be Polly. Yes. Is your mummy in? Or your brother? Are you a good girl, Polly? Do you go to Sunday school? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure you do, don't you? Excuse me, who are you? Mrs Gore. What do you want? Oh, good afternoon, Mrs Gore. I've come to talk to you about guardian angels. Oh, no, you haven't. I've had enough of guardian angels. Mrs Gore, you don't have to stay much. It may be our salvation. I don't want any more. Thank you. Goodbye. Polly, come with me. You'll just stay down the garden with me. Oh, they were. And David, it's becoming impossible. You've got to do something. Like what? Well, I don't know. Ring up the press council or something. Darling, a few journalists and a cranky old woman aren't the end of the world. No, I agree. They are not. I have also had a couple of spiritualists, a dotty clergyman, a white witch, and a woman who's doing a thesis on the paranormal in adolescence. Oh, and darling. David, it's not funny. And to cap it all, I have also had a telephone call from the National... from the National School's Art Foundation. What did they want? You remember Matthew told us that Miss Soames had kept a picture of his. The one she made him draw looking through the art room window, yes? She's entered it for the National School's Art Exhibition. Well, I suppose if it was anything like the others he's done, it was pretty striking. Oh, is that all you're going to say? I think it's outrageous. I mean, how dare she do that without even consulting us? The very least she could have done was to ask us. Why on earth should she? Darling, she's only doing her job. She probably thought we'd be delighted, and so we would have been if it wasn't for this chocky business. And there's no real harm done, is there? You don't understand. It won first prize. Oh. Yes. And what are we going to do when Matthew starts telling everybody that it was Chucky who did it? And how long do you think it's going to be before somebody realises that the boy who suddenly discovered he can paint is the same boy who heard a guardian angel in the river? Well, then what are we going to do? They'll think he's going mad. No, no, no. How could they possibly? You couldn't find a saner boy anywhere than Matthew. You know that. Well, I thought I did, but... Oh, David, I... I'm so afraid for him if they hear that he hears voices in his darling, head. Darling, and... darling, there is nothing, nothing at all wrong with Matthew himself. He's as normal a boy as one could, ho could hope to meet. But the swimming and the painting, all those questions. I know, I know. The only way I can explain it is to say that he's sort of haunted. Haunted? Well, I wish I could think of a better word. It's a kindly sort of haunting. It doesn't mean him any harm. After all, it did save his life and Polly's. Oh, I see you're saying it really is a guardian angel. No. Well, I suppose yes, in a way. Whatever it is, I'm convinced it comes from outside him. And Landis thinks so, too. He is an expert on mental disorders, after all. And? He's been giving our problem considerable thought. Oh, that's very kind. He of suggests we let Sir William Thorpe see Matthew and give us his opinion. Sir William? Who's he? Landis says he's the absolute top man. He advises some of the biggest international firms on industrial psychology. Real, practical stuff, not just theories. As well as working in St. Benedict's and running various clinics. All right. Let's see what Sir William's got to say. How do you do? I'm uh, very grateful to you for agreeing to see Matthew so quickly. That's quite all right, Mr. Gore. I'm only too pleased to do what I can. Hello, Matthew. Come and sit down. How are you? Okay. How do you do, sir? 
Dr. Landis has already told me about your little problem. Oh, good, Dad. Well, shall I, um... If you'd like to leave Matthew with me for an hour or so, so that we can have a little chat, perhaps you'd come back at, shall we say, 4.30. Yes, of course. See you later. Sit down, Matthew. Make yourself at home. I see. So your friend Chalky finds it difficult to understand the varying degrees of intelligence in animals. Yes. She wanted to know why a cows on a farm near our home couldn't learn to open the gate for themselves, since they'd obviously learnt which door to go into the milking shed and everything. That's a good question. Do they have animals where she comes from? I don't know. Don't think they can have. That's right. Try to empty your mind. And in a moment, you may start to feel drowsy. Don't worry if you feel like going to sleep. That's quite all right. I'm going to ask you some more questions and I want you to answer them all truthfully. You must hold nothing back. Nothing at all. Now. Chalky. There we are, Matthew. If you'd like to wait next door with Miss Jenkins for a moment while I have a quick word with your father. Well? I'm afraid I haven't the time to explain it all to you at the moment, Mr. Gore. I have another appointment. However, you can put your mind at rest. There's absolutely nothing for you to worry about. Good. My, uh, my wife will be pleased to hear that. Yes, I'm sure she will. You can tell her that it's just a phase, and not as uncommon as you might suppose in a boy of his age. Matthew has built up an elaborate fantasy system. That's all. Nothing to worry about, I promise you. But the, uh, the swimming, the painting, the incident with the car... Yes, yes, I'll write to you with a full report about all that in a day or two. They're all perfectly natural, I assure you. Well... Thank you again. The subconscious is an amazing thing, Mr. Gore. Amazing. Chucky. Chucky. Chucky, where are you? Chucky, where are you? Why won't you come? Why wouldn't you come? I cannot come to you anymore. Why? What have I done? I have to. 
go away. No! You must forget me. No! Forget me. You're my friend. I cannot explain. I have to go back. Back to my own people. But that's not fair. It is not fair for me to stay. It could be dangerous for you. No, no, please, Chucky. I must go. Goodbye, Matthew. Please don't. Forget me, Matthew. Please don't leave me, Chucky. Forget. Don't go away. Forget. Please don't leave me. Chucky! Chucky! You sound happy this morning. I am. I feel as though a huge weight has been lifted from my mind. One for you. Thank you. Thanks. Anything from Sir William? Uh, he did say it would be a day or two. Oh, yes. What's that? Something for Matthew. <laughs> Hello, darling. There's a package for you. From the Royal Swimming Society, according to the label. Aren't you going to open it? It's all right. Chalky's medal, not mine. She's the one that saved me and Polly. That's not true! Matthew! 